The car and gun worlds have much overlap. There are different tools for different jobs. A minivan, for example, is designed to transport unruly, dirty children back and forth from soccer practice where they eat communal orange slices only to catch whatever illness the other dirty children have. The minivan is reasonably priced and will get no one laid. And it makes the following noise. A Lexus LFA, on the other hand, one of my all-time favorite cars, is designed to transport only two people. You and the only fans model that you are transporting to her next, quote, photo shoot. At roughly half a million dollars, it is the opposite of reasonably priced. And it makes quite a different sound. A Glock, by comparison, is purely utilitarian. The minivan of the gun world, you might say. A Glock is designed to be cheap and reliably transport your bullets from their magazine to the intended target. It will get no one laid, and it makes the following sound. 2011s are the supercar of the gun world. They're rare, exotic, and tell any unsuspecting female that you like speed. Hot, nasty speed at the range. And they make a wonderful sound. This 2011 is the Artemis. It's from a company called Atlas Gunworks. And while there's much to discuss, for now, Let's just sit back and watch it work. Okay, welcome. Welcome back, Jake. To a slight little uh, hail sleet storm here. But it's that Utah. I'm appropriately dressed for. Yes, for those of you that <laughs> wonder, we do film in Utah, and Utah is a very interesting climate, so uh, that's what you got today. Um, this video, special thank you on this. So the Atlas in question here, the Artemis that we will be discussing, uh, did not come to us from Atlas. It is not a personal gun. It came from a shop in Florida called it's either Volusia or Volusia. I don't know which, but okay. it's Volusia uh, Top Gun. They're down in Florida, I think around the Tampa region, if I remember correct. Good but anyway, area. Good area. Uh, they're simply nice enough to let us borrow their new Atlas. They just um, sent it out? It's just the coolest thing in the world. Damn, so thank you, guys. They are, <laughs> they are an Atlas dealer. They asked for nothing uh, for this video. They're just nice dudes, So, but they are an Atlas dealer. So if you cool. guys are looking for Atlas stuff, uh, hit them up, see if they got anything in stock, and uh, that's that. 9 mil in case here came from uh, U.S. Brass House. Yep. Our yeah. uh, ammo guys. Two different codes there you can plug in, both the number 1911 and then a separate code, Syndicate, uh, and it winds up saving you like 40 bucks off your cases of ammo. So we've yep. got that um, <coughs> on our side just real quick here. <coughs> if you guys need 
and apologies for the cough here, just a little under the weather, so it is what it is. But um, if you need real estate help, let us know. That's kind of our uh, our day gig behind the scenes here. Actually got a real estate deal uh, under contract since we've been filming today, which is yeah. a nice way to interrupt your filming day. So Nice phone call to get. That, Patreon, <coughs> if you guys uh, need any more content, all that kind of stuff. So let's get into this. For those of you that don't know how our channel works, uh, typically me and Chris run separate projects. So the Atlas has been with me the whole time. Chris's first time shooting it t was today. So essentially Chris is gonna be learning the yeah. <coughs> things that I will be discussing and, uh, and there we go. So let's talk about who Atlas is, what they make, and also as importantly, what don't they make? So. Atlas is not a custom gun builder. Okay. Okay. They're not. Atlas makes predetermined models that just happen to be made like a custom gun in the sense of this is a predetermined model, right? You do not get to pick where your serrations go. You do not get to say, well, you know, can we do this instead? Not really. There's a few things that you can pick, which we will get into. But the reality is, it's a predetermined model that then goes to one of their gunsmiths who builds it under the same attention to detail that a custom gunsmith would. Okay. It's but it's you're essentially not a production anything. model. Correct. It's a production gun in the sense that, hey, this is a model that we make. If you call Atlas and you say, hey, could we change how this is done? They're going to respectfully say, no, here's a couple of recommendations on a shop you might go in order to get that experience that you're looking for. Um, the two things that Atlas, I did a call with Atlas uh, leading into this, which we always try to do with manufacturers. Yeah. The two things they told me they really pride themselves on are one, less than 90 day lead time. Wow. Which I love. Cool. I love that because I've had a custom 2011 that I waited three years for, right? So. Yeah, I would have thought this would have been, <coughs> I don't know, six to nine months. Yeah, I would have thought probably a year, you know, yeah. just kind of based on demand and stuff. But less than 90 day lead time um, and they'll do their best to get it less than that. But right now, you know, less than 90 day lead time and they answer the phone. Okay, if you leave them a message, they'll call you back, <laughs> which I love, uh, and I'm a sucker for it. And I also believe that when you spend first class money on a first class gun, that you should get a first class customer service experience. Which is lost on a lot of first class brands nowadays. A lot, a lot. So it's like, hey, look, if I pay premium money, I want premium customer service. I don't think that's a snobby thing either. I kind of thought it was originally, but when you start so. getting into really custom guns or like <coughs> custom cars or just high end shit, the experience better be different than your local mom and pop shop. Has you know to what be. I'm saying? In, in my opinion, I care equally about the product, but the experience of the product. Um, yeah. But that's me. So let's get into a tour of this thing. So this is the Artemis, okay? This is designed as an Ipsic pistol, okay? So it's a competition gun, okay? I can't tell you the difference between Ipsic. Well, I know IDPA is more concealed oriented, but. <coughs> is it? Yeah. IDPA, yes. Are you sure about USPSA that? USPSA and IPSC are very similar to me, and I can't really tell you the difference. IDPA, International like Defensive Pistol Association. Association. Yeah, or so something. it's from concealment and carry gun shit like that. Huh. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is a competition gun, uh, more of an open style gun. I don't know exactly what that means, but it, open in the sense of like, hey, red dots and like magwells and all that. Comps, kind of shit. anything you want. Yeah. Okay. Now. While this is a competition gun, I do not think it has to be limited to being a competition gun. To me, I shoot it and see it, and I'm like, why couldn't it just be an all-purpose range gun or a home defense gun or anything okay. else like that? To me, it could. It can do pretty much anything. It's not going to be a great carry gun. Yeah. Would not be my pick for a carry gun. One, just because of weight, you know. Two, it's just, you know, big, you know, big optic, magwell, all that kind of stuff. But it's like, yeah, it's a competition gun, but it can do a lot of different shit, you know. You're going to carry it? Probably not. But anything else, it's probably going to be fine for <laughs> you're going to get some pushback saying that's a home defense gun, too. No, I think it's fine as a home defense gun. Yeah, you're yeah. going to get pushback because people are going to be like, there's no way in hell if that happens, I'm going to let them take my... Yeah, which is a stupid argument. If I get in yeah. a gunfight and my better gun hypothetically made me perform better in a gunfight and I'm alive, you give a fuck if you take my gun? Exactly. I don't give a shit. Yep. Take the gun, dude. I'm happy to be alive right now. That was an argument with my <laughs> rifle. Someone's like, I'm not letting them take my you know, $6,000 rifle. And I'm like, well, if I'm alive, then... Yeah, who cares? Um, so the Artemis, while it, it's a competition gun, so this is actually not their fastest uh, gun. They told me, hey, if you think about this like in car terms, um, the suspension, if you will, on this gun, the shooting, the way it feels when you drive it or shoot it, it's going to feel more like a Cadillac. It's going to feel cushy, like softer suspension. It's going to return to zero, which we'll talk about, but um, it's going to be a soft shooting experience. 
if you're like, look, I'm a competition guy, I want a GT3, I just want like a sports car, it can be rough, but just dirty fast, cool. The Athena is their model that's gonna be a little bit more appropriate for that. Which I have shot that model. <laughs> I have not, good on you, so I haven't even shot that one yet. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, that's what this is, right? Think uh, suspension, it's like the Cadillac of the Atlas line. The barrel, 4.6 inch bull barrel. Pull back on that slide just yep. so people can see that. Fancy, very smooth bull barrel there. Um, so when I took this apart yesterday to clean it, just throw some oil in it and stuff, man, that barrel, I don't know what the finish is on the barrel, but it is mind-blowingly smooth. Um, just a random observation, but man, the fitment and everything, when I took it apart yesterday, I was like, man, this thing is well fit. This is a very, very well fit gun. <coughs> it has on the end of that barrel, a front sight block. So it may look like a comp when you're first looking at it. It's not a comp, it's just a weight. Yeah. Um, it's just a block of metal, it's a front sight block. No um, cuts in it whatsoever. Nope, so all it's designed to do is keep the muzzle as flat as possible and get that gun returning back to its natural zero as efficiently as possible. It has the sight radius of a five inch gun, right? So it is a 4.6 inch barrel, <coughs> much like uh, Erstikato 4.4. Scott is 4.4, I think, right? Yep. Um, but, so anyway, 4.6 inch bull barrel, but sight radius of a five inch gun, which is considered by most people like the perfect sight radius, sight radius you know, is that, that five inch there. The grip, let's talk a little bit about the grip. So these come in nine and 40. So that is a case where you can take your pick. Like, do you want this in nine or 40? People would do 40 for shit like power factor. It's power right? factor, that, or 38 super, right? I thought it was 40. Well, yeah, I'm saying like those two, people run those in competitions for the power factor. Sure. Whatever the fuck that means. It's something, man. Yep. It is something else. Uh, and so I don't need a power, you know, we are the power factor. I don't know if we, I. Let's call this episode, we are the power oh, factor. Oh, jeez. That's the Atlas, we are the power factor. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this comes in nine <laughs> and 40. Uh, the nine mil, which is this one, it comes with an aluminum grip module, okay? This is what they consider their moderate grip texture, <laughs> which, which is very interesting, because it's grippy. Well, let's, we'll see if I can do it again. I just, I wasn't even squeezing hard, and you can see like indents <laughs> in my hand. Yeah, like when you're gripping the shit out of that thing when you shoot it, um, it's a fascinating grip, because when you just, like just holding it, you just kind of yeah. brush your hand over it, you're like, oh, this is gonna chew me up. But when you shoot it, it doesn't. No, not at all. It's just really, yeah. it's locked in. Which of course on any sort of gun, whether it's competition, home defense, whatever it is, I want my gun to be locked in. I want that shit going anywhere when I need to shoot it. I like it cocked and locked, my man. <laughs> you don't need to say that to me again, but I get your point. Um, you can, this is kind of a cool way that they do their grip. So you can customize these on their site when you order it with different ways that the grip is arranged. So you'll see on either side of the grip, you see these panels? Yeah, so there's a panel here, and so on this side right here, uh -huh. which would be what your left side, was that? left side, I guess. I was gonna do it with the like 12, three, <laughs> six, nine. That's complicated, but, sure. Well, I mean, I just did it and I'm a dummy. Dummy, so. so yeah. Yeah, so a panel essentially sits right here. It's hard because it blends in real well. And right here. And so the purpose of that, right now that's just like a flat, uh, grip, but you can get swells on either or width. both sides, yeah, to fit your hand oh, better. Okay. So if you're like, look, I shoot, you know, how you would know this to me, you probably need to test it out or like find some samples of these somewhere or something. But like, they can huh. basically add swells, and so if you have monster hand, skinny hand, whatever it is, it's like cool. You can make that grip work very well for you. Yeah. And that's a nice. I, I think that's a cool. That's a cool thing. You I don't got know big of meaty else hands. That, you might. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't know of anyone else that particularly does that in terms of the customizing the, the panels and all that. That's pretty neat. So <clears throat> there's that. If you get the 40 cal one, it goes from an aluminum grip to a steel grip. So it's going to be heavier. Okay. Of course, to control the recoil more. Okay. And, makes you know, sense. <laughs> makes sense. And it's also going to go to an aggressive texture versus that is the moderate. <laughs> so the aggressive has got to be aggressive as shit. I think I've I've shot a gun with the aggressive on it, and it's it's got to be it's aggressive. aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Like aggressive. It almost hurts just holding it. Yeah, you've got also in the grip two different magwell options. So you have the standard, and then you have the more streamlined, like tactical one. It's like kind of the slim one. Uh, if I was ordering one of these, I would do the slim. I don't need the the big giant one there. The um, big ass magwell, man. Does it make reloads fast? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's kind of tough to miss 
<laughs> on your that. reloads. Yeah. And it's nicely done. Um, it's a it's a good magwell. It just I, I would probably do the more minimalist one. Uh, let, you know, like you said at the start of the video, it's not my gun. This was not made per my request or anything. This was a shop that got one in and was nice enough to loan it out to us. So, so cool, man. This was a range gun, basically. So uh, let's talk about the trigger. The trigger is interesting, and there's a few options. So here's your different things you can pick on your trigger. You want it flat or curved. Do you want it short, medium, or long? It's the actual like length of the, the trigger bar there. Yeah, as far as like that. <laughs> I'm not length. sure. Atlas looked up that gun for me to, to give me the, the specs. So I know the trigger weight, but I don't know the length of it. Obviously okay. it's flat. I'm not sure if that's, it's definitely not short. I just don't know if it's medium or long. Gotcha. But you can do it short, medium, long. <coughs> you can pick the color, a bunch of different colors. I don't really give a shit. Um, hey, that's cool. Uh, you get the little red the flare here, a little red yeah. flare there. It's a nice touch. I'm just not, you know, it, it, it's it, awesome, cool. Like, it, you know, just doesn't move me either way. Um, and then you can pick the weight. So there's really two different weight options. As far as trigger pull weight. Yes. Okay. So they don't really have names for them, but I can tell you the weights. So there's going to be one that is sub two pounds. That's what this one is. Yeah. So this is, they said, hey, look, we're, we're going to guess knowing what the trigger is. It's going to come in about one and three quarter pounds, Jeez. which is insanely light. Um, it's very, very light. Um, the other one is going to be three pounds, maybe a touch over. Okay, so the two pound trigger, let's talk about. It would be good for people that are running competitions that are looking to, go, I wanna go fast, right? I wanna yeah. go fast. Uh, it's gonna be very good for that. <coughs> if, so if you're running competitions, cool. And I was trying to see like, well, who else would the tr trigger that light be for? And they basically said someone who, this is their primary gun that they run like 90% of their range days. Okay. Like if you just spend a ton of time with this thing where like you're just intimate with this gun because it's it's your workhorse, you use this all the time, then you're going to get very predictable with it. If you are either going to be using this, let's just say hypothetically in a duty capacity, which would, that would be a pretty absurd gun for duty capacity, but... Also, I respect it. <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> awesome. But um, I would say <coughs> duty is also in the category of like home defense. If you're going to use that as a bedside gun, to me, that's still a duty role, meant to be a defensive tool at that point. Or if you're someone like either of us who you're constantly bouncing between different guns. So in the course of a day, today, for example, went from shooting a SIG 551 trigger, which is super heavy, and there's three stages in it, a SIG 365, two different 365s. And then that thing, and then maybe there's something else in there. Or staccato. Not thinking of, staccato. You know, it's like, hey, you bounce between a lot of different triggers. And so you kind of wind up like decent at a lot of different things, but a master of none. You know, jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing. This is not the trigger for you. Like you want the three pound trigger. Yeah. If this was my gun, 100%, I want the three pound trigger. Mm -hmm. Like don't give me that. It's I'd go light. three across the board for me. Yeah, three is like for me in the perfect sweet spot. So if you get one of these, just know, hey, pick your trigger weight based on an honest assessment of both your skill level and <coughs> what you're going to be using the gun for and how often you bounce between different platforms. Okay? Honest assessment being the operant word. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've had a couple of, um, let me choose my words properly, like, um, not NDs because that applies like a safety, you know, malfunction. Safety violation, yeah. But, um, but a surprise break. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're like, look, I, I was just trying to reset a trigger and I was like, well, yep, I, I hit that reset a little too close, right? And I just sent that second round, right? So yeah. a couple of like unintentional <clears throat> double taps, right? So, and that's someone who shoots a lot and shoots a lot of 2011s a lot. So just keep it in mind. That's all I'm saying. The safety, uh, <coughs> it's an ambi, but it's for a right-handed shooter. It is uh, one of the things that's caused me challenges with this. No fault of the gun whatsoever. Um, let me see real quick. Big old paddle on that boy. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> so because for a righty, this side is going to be slimmed down, right? And this side is fat. And that way I can kind of use it as a, as a, a ledge there. For a lefty, the problem with that is that your left knuckle hits it up. So yep. like I'm not touching it. All I'm doing is high grip on the gun and right. Eh, yeah. 
So, and I've done that sometimes where I'm shooting and I'm like dead trigger and I'm like, ah, fuck, just put the safety on. So it's no issue with the safety. It's no, no fault of the, the gun whatsoever. Again, this is a, a range gun. It's just, hey, if you're a lefty and you're going to get one of these, I asked Atlas, I said, hey, if I was ordering this, I would need that switch. Is that an option? And they said, yeah, that's no problem. Like essentially we'll invert. Oh yeah, um, just those, flip them. Those safeties for you. So be aware of that if you happen to be a lefty because you probably need to call in and give them that information. Which me, even with me, so my thumb is right here. When I was laying into that gun in some of the footage, I did that because <laughs> yeah. my thumb came up ever so slightly. Yeah. And it, I, I was like, oh, I know what you're talking about. I yeah. don't know if we caught that in the footage, yeah, but, I don't know, yeah. but yeah. Just because with my grip, you know, having a fatter thumb, yeah. like, look, I can't even get my thumb underneath that ledge. You would use it as a ledge. I would have to keep it on. Yeah, you'd use it yes. as a gas pedal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Um, so <coughs> a couple other <coughs> just miscellaneous things. So the red dot system, this is cut for an RMR or SRO. Obviously an SRO is on it. Yep. Um, nothing to really be discussed. There the iron sights uh, do co-witness at the very bottom of the window. So if and you're running just that, at the very bottom and I, I like. like it. I like it too. Because yeah. it doesn't distract me inside of yeah. my window. No, it's all, I mean, it is <coughs> lower eighth of the window. Yeah, I mean, it's nowhere close to one third. Correct. One third usually seems to be kind of bogus number that people throw out. It's just like, eh, it's not really in the actual bottom one third. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, the serrations are really nice. Great yeah. traction. Yep. Um, so, hey, serrations, hey, good. <laughs> yeah. The slide is insanely buttery. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I, I mean, almost obnoxious, obnoxiously smooth. Full length rail. Uh, you can also opt for no rail if you didn't want one. I don't know why you wouldn't want, aesthetically, wouldn't want one. Aesthetically, you better get a rail. Yeah. I mean, like, we're living in America here. Put a mm. fucking rail on your gun if it's an option. Yep. Uh, MSRP, <coughs> they're pricey, right? 6400 bucks, And be your price out the door on that. It's not factoring in the optic. Optic's separate, but that's to be expected. So they are pricey guns. Let's just talk about a few of the kind of observations, different things that we noticed going through this. One, the slide Oof. to frame fit is fantastic. So you'll know if like there's no play. No wiggle, that. no play whatsoever. Yeah. No lateral, no up and down. Nope. Like there's just no play in that. It's, it's extremely, extremely well fit. Very impressed with the uh, slide to frame fit on that gun. Very, very nice. So Atlas runs on a concept called uh, perfect zero, uh, the perfect return to zero, which is, I'm gonna tell you the truth, I, I believe things like this to be marketing gimmicky lines, which is their, their thing is, hey, our guns perfectly return to zero. So I shoot, whether I'm running irons or a dot, <coughs> right? Gun goes up. They're saying the guns perfectly return to zero. Well, this is a bit tough to test on irons, but on a red dot, it's a bit easier to test because yeah. it's like is my dot dropping back down at the end of this in an efficient manner the answer is yes it actually very much does on this i would say there's a couple things here one i still think it's a bit of a marketing gimmick two this gun does return to zero very very nicely that's a combination of a heavy gun with a front sight block it's also a combination of the fact that the sro has a giant window. So at no point when you're shooting this already soft recoiling gun, does your dot actually leave your window? Not once. So it's like, I can see my dot the whole time and it's doing this. So I can, it helps control it very, very well. I'm giving them a 50-50 pass on it. It's like, I do think, yeah, there's some kind of marketing stuff there, but it does return to zero very nicely. And I can't really dispute that either. So it's like, I'm kind of like uh, in the middle on that. Regardless, the gun shoots very nice, whether the perfect return to zero thing is accurate or not. The mags. So much like a, uh, if we kind of go back to our supercar analogies from earlier, so supercars sometimes will require specific fuel that they would run on. You would think that I'm talking about ammo <clears throat> on this, which I'm not, because these guns are actually built to run like just production normal ammo. They're not meant to be like competition guns that like we need this special ninja rocket fuel ammo in order for it to, to run properly. It's like, nah, it's, it runs on regular factory ammo and it does a very good job of it. Which I like. <coughs> place where it gets picky is on max okay? yeah so uh, so when i got this i had this one atlas mag that it came with which i don't know where that right is, here but <coughs> so it came with the one atlas mag that the range sent me that that they uh that they had i had a couple of uh, 17 round staccato mags i don't think will even work with that so i didn't try yeah so i had a couple 20 round staccato mags 
And the malfunction I was having having was I'd go to a slide lock reload, right? So I'm running that mag. Go to slide lock reload. Index staccato mag, staccato mag goes in. I go to drop the slide and the round instead of chambering would just nosedive into the mag. So instead of getting a round chambered, round just does this inside like the mag. Like you get stuck at the bottom of the feed ramp? Kinda, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Yep. And, <clears throat> and so it's very consistent. It happened with Crispy. Me and Crispy went to shoot it because I'm nice and I'm a mentor and <laughs> tried to take kids off the street. So I was, you know, got them off the street for days, took them to a, a gun range, taught them to do man shit, right? It's like Big Brothers of America? Yeah, 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 right? So I'm doing my good deed for the day and shooting and <clears throat> rounds are nose diving. I'm like, this clearly is a mag issue, but I'm trying to also pinpoint. So I was talking to Atlas and just going, hey, so it was funny because they preempted, they knew exactly what I was about to bring up before I brought it up. I, I said, hey, can we just get this out of the way? I got this one malfunction. I'm trying to figure out what it is. And they're like, uh-huh. Yeah, go, go ahead. We know what and, it and is. And I was, I was like, so I'm running staccato mags. They're like, uh-huh. They're, they're like rounds nose diving in the mags. And I'm like, Oh, yes. they knew instantly. Yes. So okay. I was like, exactly that. And they're like, yeah. <clears throat> Long story short, um, Staccato mags are just a little undersprung. Um, they they work fine. I'm not shitting on them. I've got many of them, and they work fine in my Fowler, and they work fine in my my older STI. They run fine in your staccato. Mine are running Gary. <clears throat> they run fine, but they're picky on this gun, right? And they are generally speaking a little undersprung. And you'll know this because you'll drop a mag sometimes, and your rounds just fly out. Yeah. And you're like, or you'll chamber around, and then you'll take your mag out, and the next round's halfway forward yeah. down the feed lip. So it's like they are a little undersprung at least for the liking of this gun so if you're going to get one of these you're probably going to want to run the atlas well you're going to have a few options actually so atlas makes their own max you got three options if you're like hey <clears throat> you could tune your staccato mags <clears throat> try to get the springs with a little bit more tension on them which would probably mean <clears throat> lengthening them out a tad <clears throat> they said you might need to play with the feed lips a little bit that's pain in the ass doesn't sound like anything i want to do i said you could take your staccato housing get our springs and followers and you could do that probably the easiest route it's probably the easiest and most economical route yeah said or you can just buy atlas mags the atlas mags are 100 bucks um so they're pricey but they're not actually outrageous did they say anything about mbx mags yes okay <coughs> those would work fine <coughs> there's not gonna be any issue there but those are 150 a pop yeah they're like 140 you hell. know so it's like and for something that i don't feel does any better job so you can get the Atlas mags, they're hundred bucks. They were nice enough to send a couple just so we could get through, through the review and, and have not but one mag that's running properly. So, and you can get their mags where they either lock back or don't. Okay. You get a couple extra rounds if, it, if it's the non lockback follower. And obviously, you know, I've got the 20 rounders. You can get them in the 17s or like the 27s or whatever it is. So anyway, Atlas mags, really good. They sent a couple. The springs are very stiff when they're, when they're new, <laughs> like, Getting your 20 rounds in when those uh, mags are new, you're gonna be working for it. So probably try to break them in a little or just leave some mags jammed. Or just or shoot a like lot. That. Yeah, or shoot a lot. They're also always in stock. So according to them, never have to worry about those mags being out of stock. Last couple things, uh, Atlas, I like that they do this. So they have a service program that they do. It requires you to track your rounds or at least give a best estimate of your round count. But basically it's on their site. <clears throat> it's an item you go and you add to your cart, it's 250 bucks. Send it in every 10,000 rounds. <coughs> they place out, they do a deep clean, replace any springs, tune up, all that stuff, send your gun back. And a real quick turnaround, like inside of a week. I appreciate that. I like that. Yep. I just like a company going like, hey, just so you know, we know that your gun's gonna need maintenance. Customer service experience, correct? <coughs> yeah. And that 250 bucks includes uh, labels both ways, <laughs> which is frankly probably 100 bucks of the 250. Again, customer service yeah. experience. You know, so it's like, hey, 250 bucks covers all your shipping. Tune up your gun, make it like it's brand new again, send it back to you. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> I dig it. So here's kind of my, my last thought. Well, let me ask you this. So you're yeah. coming from staccato mostly, <clears throat> shooting uh -huh. that. So how's that for you shooting <clears throat> just like staccato? Just like going from a Glock <coughs> to a staccato, I say is like going from like a Chevy truck to a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. This was like going, staccato's going like a uh, BMW, let's say like a <coughs> M5. That's a generous, but sure. You asked my opinion, correct? Yeah. Okay, so shut up, Jake. To a Ferrari. Okay. Will you give me that or no? <coughs> yeah, because it's a big leap. <coughs> so sure. Yeah, the, for an M5 to a Ferrari, that's a big leap. Yeah, right? it's a big leap. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's just a refinement to it. Yeah, it's just a. Everything is quite a. Not quite a bit. Everything is noticeably better. Yes. Trigger, 
uh, fit and finish. The grip. Overall, clearly. yeah, overall feel of the gun, weight of the gun, the grip. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. <coughs> and I agree. Um, you know, I look at it like this. Once you start, once you go above five gram on a 2011, you're in big boy territory. Yeah. Okay. Like, like I, I, I told him that on the phone, not trying to be like super serious tough guy or anything, but I told him, I'm like, look guys, for me, once you go past five grand, you're in the elite territory. Yeah. And your shit's got to be like perfect. Yeah. Like it really does. Um, and to me, this uh, passes. It, yeah. it, it passes the bar for me. Fits um, the bill, doesn't it? You <coughs> I do hold not. It one more time. Before? I do not own an Atlas. I never have. I can tell you, especially after this, uh, being a very positive experience with this. Um, I would, I would spend personal money on one. I don't have a need for one right now, but if I get to a point where I'm like, Hey, time for another five, $6,000 gun, I'd do it. Yeah. <coughs> I wouldn't hesitate. I'd do it. So that's about the best endorsement I can give you given that it's a gun that it has not been paid for. It's just on loan is like, yeah, I'd spend my money on this bad boy. It's yeah. pretty damn nice. I noticed it runs off a uh, Dawson uh, toolless guide rod also. <coughs> it does. So you can replace those springs if you want to. Fairly easy, nice for cleaning. Yep. It's just kind of, like I said, overall fit, finish, refinement is better. Noticeably better. So for me, you know, I got a, what, $2,000, 2011. Mm -hmm. Next would be like a Fowler right, right around four. Next would be that. Yep. Yeah, you agree? Yeah, okay. I do. I do. It's a, it's a cool gun, man. I, I really enjoyed shooting it. That trigger <coughs> is money. Yep. So there you go, guys. We'll go ahead and wrap this up. But yep. Atlas uh, Artemis, solid pick. If you got the cash for it, worth looking into. Yep. Thanks, guys. We'll Later. see you next time. <laughs>